Hello there, my fellow Warhammer aficionados, and welcome to another lore video about its fantasy branch. Today we are gonna be returning for a while to the greatest and obviously the most civilized nation of men in the old world, aka the Empire. Since I've already done a video about their government and politics in the past, I thought it would be a good idea to cover the religion and the gods of the Empire next. This will be a two or even three parts miniseries, as I will talk in some detail about each of the main deities. For those of you who are too impatient, I'm gonna tell you right now who I'm gonna talk about today. It is Tal, Raya, and Manan. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about Imperial deities, shall we? A deeply superstitious people, the Empire of Man has always looked to the gods for hope, prosperity, and salvation, upon a world that is awash with misery, destruction, and corruption. Generally, nearly every village, town, or city has dedicated a portion of its land and wealth to the construction and maintenance of at least one temple to an imperial deity. It is from these very temples and shrines that people deposit their daily offerings, hoping to curry the favor of the gods and perhaps improve their lives in a small manner. These cults possess considerable political influence on the workings of the empire, be it through religious or monetary means. Such is the case that even the cult of Sigmar and the cult of Ulrich have an electoral power to choose who shall become the next emperor, a power that is usually reserved only for the elector counts. Currently, the cult of Sigmar holds the strongest influence within the empire, having the ability to cast three votes within the selection process, with each vote being divided towards the Grand Theogonist and his two archlectors. Such is the ever-growing influence of the Sigmarite cult that it is now common to consider the people of the Empire simply as Sigmar's folk, or the sons of Sigmar. Depending on the location of a particular community, some areas of the Empire have a certain degree of worship towards a certain family of gods. Within the northern areas of the Empire, the people of these harsh lands have been known to worship an older pantheon, known as the Elder Gods, while in the South, the worship of the so-called Classical Gods is more common. Such religious differences have been known to have resulted in the Empire experiencing a certain degree of religious strife, the most prominent of which was during a period called the Age of the Free Emperors. During that unfortunate time, the resulting emperor, along with his Sigmarite followers, fought against two self-proclaimed emperors of the provinces of Middenland and Talabekland, both of which were worshippers of Ulrich and Tal. The resulting devastation and centuries of warfare had resulted in the creation of a regular conclave of faith in Altdorf for the high priests of every major faith in the empire to gather together and come into agreements without the need for bloodshed. The Elder Gods, also known as the Country Gods or the Northern Gods, are the oldest of the Old World pantheon. Their origin of worship can be traced back for more than 2,000 years, during the time when primitive human tribes began to settle in the lands of the Old World. The main Elder Gods are Tal, the god of the wilds and the husband of Raya, Raya, the goddess of agriculture and birth, Manan, god of the sea and the son of Tal and Raya, and Ulrich, god of winter and wolves and the younger brother of Tal. The classical gods, also known as the town gods or the southern gods, are the youngest of the old world pantheon, whose worship is usually confined to the lands of the south and the lands of Tylea and Estalia. And they are Mor, the god of death and the husband of Varena, Varena, goddess of justice and learning, Myrmidia, goddess of warfare and strategy and the daughter of Mor and Varena, Shalia, goddess of mercy and healing and the other daughter of Mor and Varena, 
and Ranald, or Ranald, god of trickery, luck and faves. The Empire also has a main god that is not connected to either the Elder or the classical gods. Instead, the Imperials worshipped this guy who was originally born as a mortal, who founded the Empire and was rewarded by the Old World Pantheon with the ultimate gift of godhood. You might have actually heard about him though, his name is Sigmar. And as far as today's gods are concerned, we shall start with Tal. Tal is one of the older gods of the human tribesmen who created the Empire of Man. He is the god of nature, the lord of beasts, mountains and forests. Tal rules nature and is considered the king of the gods. He claims the wild places of the world and is primarily worshipped by hardy woodsmen, trackers and rangers. Like nature itself, Tal is often considered indifferent to mortal concerns. Older than Ulrich and more powerful than even Sigmar, Tal is normally portrayed as a powerfully built man with long wild hair, dressed in animal skins and wearing the skull of a great stag as a helmet. It is also claimed that he can take the form of a great bison, a bear, or a mighty stag. Tal's holy symbols include antlers, deer skulls, and stone axes. The traditional form of temple to Tal is a circular structure built of rough unmortared stone, with a conical roof. His shrines are also sacred groves, marked by the skull of a stag, bison, or bear hung in an old tree. Mountain shrines are often cairns topped with the skulls of the same creatures. There's also monasteries to Tal, like the La Maison Tal Abbey located in the Grey Mountains. As far as the strictures of his cult, they can include. The children of Tal often give themselves for food and sacrifice. Respect and honor this gift to you. A sacrifice of an animal or grain must be made once per month at the dark of the moon. Every year, all priests must spend seven solitary days and nights away from civilization, communing with nature. Do not clad yourself in metal. Instead, wear the hides of your animal kin. Take pride in your natural might and skill. Avoid guns and other works of science. Tal is often worshipped along his wife, Raya, in a combined cult. While Tal is the dominant partner in this relationship, his worshippers often revere Raya as well. The cult of Tal and Raya is the state-sanctioned religion of Talabekland. His worship is strongest in the north and east of the empire, particularly in the rural areas. Raya, or Rhea. If I'm mispronouncing it, please correct me. Raya is the Earth Mother, the goddess of all that grows and lives. It is to Raya to whom the people of the Old World pray for fair winds, moderate rain, healthy plants and animals, yet she is also the Huntress. The wife of Tal, Raya, is seen as the more merciful and gentle of the pair and is often asked to intercede with her husband to calm his rages. The changing of the seasons is the turn of Raya's wheel. Anything that interrupts the smooth running of this pattern of life is of concern to her. Raya is the goddess of community, well-being, health, love, fertility, and birth. She is the god of gentle nature, the land that humans have tamed, farming, and the harvest. She seems to have the widest range of all the old world's deities. Her domain touches everyone, every moment of the day. Her remit is so broad, she seems to have spread herself very thinly indeed, and has, as a deity in her own right, almost disappeared. Now she is known merely as the gentler side of Tal, since all her associations are subsumed into her husband. Although her name is remembered, she has no temples, save perhaps a few out-of-the-way shrines that are maintained out of the public purse, or by the priests of Tal. Likewise, there is no dedicated priesthood of Raya either. Her customs and blessings are largely taken up by the priestesses of Tal. 
However, although the people may pray to Tal to ensure that their crops are not spoiled, they do thank Raya when the crops are finally harvested. In rural areas, many people have not forgotten her, and give thanks to her in various ways. Many traditions and customs have a root in Rayan ritual. Raya has also been supplanted by Shalia in much of her care for the people, but she is still preeminent across the empire in her interest in conjugal rights. Female cultists of Tal are often the midwives of the wilderness, and try to attend every birth when they are needed. The priestesses of Tal are also well versed in general medicine and herb lore. In the deepest wilds, a follower of Raya is often the only medical practitioners for many miles. Urban folk who do not understand rural ways often find the tallest priestesses natural remedies, blessings and reliance uncomfortable, but this is a small price to pay in service to their deity. Visions from Raya often show nature at its most vulnerable. The spoiling and dying of the crops, fields colored like blood, rivers blocked or stagnant, and poisoned wells. Alternately, Raya might show nature tainted by dark forces. Animals giving birth to strange things, human-animal hybrids, and other heretical fusions of animal-animal or animal-plant. And finally, for today, Manan. Again, please correct me if I'm mispronouncing it. Manan, known by titles like the Lord of the Seas and the King of the Storms, is the imperial god of the seas and the tides. The chief god of the wayward province of the Wasteland, he also holds sway over the empire's northern coast and her rivers as far as the tide can be felt. The cult of Manan administrates his worship. He is portrayed as a huge, powerfully built, bare-chested merman, wearing a spiked, five-pointed crown of black iron. He may take the form of a whirlpool, a water spout, or a huge sea monster, usually that of a triton. The symbols of Manan include a green five-pointed crown, the trident, and the albatross. Manan controls the tides and the currents, and is as unpredictable and changeable as the sea itself. A failure to worship this god may incur his wrath, and the ship may fall victim to a storm, floundering on rocks or destroyed upon a reef. One must never kill albatrosses nor dolphins, as they are the messengers of Manan and usually help those in need at sea. Whenever you can, you shall help those who are in need at sea such as those who are shipwrecked or marooned. Never start a voyage on the 13th of each month, nor during Geheimnistag. Doing so will bring bad luck to the vessel and the crew. He is worshipped widely throughout the old world by sailors, fishermen, and coastal folk who rely on the sea, as well as in large river ports in which seagoing ships may put in. His largest old world temple is located in Marienburg, and the home of the Order of the Albatross, an organization of priest navigators. All other temples to Manan pay homage to it. However, the cult structure of Manan's worshippers is not hierarchical, and each temple is semi-independent. Other big temples exist in Altdorf and Sartosa. His cult is on friendly terms with those of his father Tal, Raya, and his father's brother Ulrich. Manan's greatest enemy is Stromfels, the god of storms, sharks, and pirates, who delights in sinking ships to the bottom of the ocean. Some sages maintain that Stromfels is just another aspect of Manan, instead of a deity in his own right. This is regarded as heretical by followers of both deities, however, and those who voice such thoughts in the presence of the other one are quickly and painfully taught the errors of their ways. And that, my friends, was what I wanted to tell you about the gods of the Empire for today. I'm not certain I'll continue this topic next week, but I will certainly finish it in the near future. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a great day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.